the narcissist manipulation where they want to influence or control your mind. There's lots of different methods and techniques that narcissistic people use to do this, but their aim is to heavily influence you in whatever need benefits the narcissist. Thank you very much for all the returning subscribers. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw and this channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the things you might have been through within your life, how to handle narcissistic people if you cannot go no contact with them and different methods you can try to help you recover from narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on this channel, please do subscribe. So this video is about how the narcissist manipulates you without you even realising to gain that control over you, to plant those seeds of self-doubt within your subconscious. There is longer videos on the channel that goes into more detail about each individual one. So one of the things narcissistic people do is brainwash you and they brainwash you through things like gaslighting, silent treatment, triangulation, projection, fear, false hope, insults, intimidation, false promises, guilt tripping and outright lies. With narcissistic people it is all about that control and a few traits of their disorder is that arrogance where they are unpleasantly proud of who they are and they can be extremely pushy within their behaviour but because their arrogance can be mistaken as confidence we can sometimes be manipulated into believing that they're a confident person that wants the best for us not realising that they are an arrogant person that's trying to sink us to make themselves feel better. As often they do act superior to other people and they don't see other, well, they don't see their own weaknesses. They will happily pick up on other people's faults and flaws, but they often don't see their own faults and their own flaws. They project those onto other people. They are extremely stubborn at times. They will often not listen to you and they are really a thief of joy. They have that sense of entitlement, so they're going to rarely help someone out unless there is something in it for them. They often hold grudges against other people. They think that the rules do not apply to them, however, they do apply to you. They're always wanting more and they lack self-awareness. That lack of empathy, so they often put other people down or talk badly of others. They rarely congratulate people on their success. They often gloat when they see people fail. And if someone has achieved something, they will, they will find the negative within that and focus on that negative to bring the person's achievement down. Quite often they're always trying to outdo people and very rarely will they offer any physical, emotional, mental support unless there is something in it for them. That belief they are special, so they often believe they are misunderstood by many people or only understood by a select few. They believe they're entitled to special treatment. They will happily tell outright lies, often believing their own lies, which is why they can be so convincing when they are manipulating other people's minds. They talk about themselves a lot and they have a lot of double standards. So some games they play. Number one is that mirroring, when they will match you a like for like, when they enjoy all the same hobbies as you, when they have all the same dreams as you, when they dislike the things that you dislike and you can seemingly talk for hours with them and they might even know what you're going to say next and say it before you and you have so much in common with them. They have collected that data on you and they are leading you to believe that they are a person that you can truly connect with they are not showing you their true selves and people can mirror mirror people it's a form of 
communication. But if somebody doesn't like something, an honest person would say, that's not really for me. A narcissist in the beginning will not. A narcissist will feed you the belief that they are very similar to you. And then as you get further into the relationship, you then have to lose the belief of who you are and start to believe in them and their reality. To the love bombing, when you when they come at you with all the false flattery and showering you with gifts and always wanting to spend the time with you, those long conversations where they are collecting that data about you so that they can mirror you. So there is a very intense phase of love bombing within a narcissist, which they can intermittently bring throughout the relationship. They need to suck you back in to their games. Three, idolisation, where they will put you on a pedestal or they'll put your future dreams on a pedestal. They'll idolise that life that they want to create with you, often the life that you want, the dreams that you have. They will promise to deliver these. They never actually deliver on these promises. They always have a get out of jail free card to make that excuse of why they haven't delivered this. And that will often be in some way to the narcissist down to you. They will blame you as to why it's your fault that they haven't delivered on something they said they would. So they break a lot of promises. Three, idolisation. So they will idolise the relationship. They will idolise the future that you're going to create together. They will idolise your dreams. They will idolise you as a person and they will make all those false promises and they will fail to deliver on those promises. They will make something look better than it is. They will have you believing in something that isn't actually true to suck you into their games. Four, devaluation, where they will criticise you, they will sabotage you, they will invalidate your thoughts, feelings and opinions. They will put you down any way they can. They will triangulate you. They will divide you from other people so that they can gain more control over you. They will pick apart your insecurities. They will pick apart your weaknesses. They will pick apart your flaws. They will pick apart your mistakes and they will use each and every one against you. Yet the narcissists themselves, they will be perfect. Nothing will ever be their own fault as they do not recognise the error in their ways. Anything, any mistake they've made, they will project that mistake onto you. Six, often appealing to your emotions. So they will play the victim. So if they've pushed you a little bit too far and you're starting to wake up from all the manipulation, they will offer those intermittent reinforcements of the idolisation phase or the love bombing phase or they will play the victim to pull on your emotions. You know what I'm like, you know what past I've had. I'm sorry if you hadn't. They will play the victim to pull on your sympathy, to guilt trip you into doing things you wouldn't ordinarily do, to break down your boundaries to manipulate your mind to get in their needs met while you slowly lose who you are as a person. Seven, the crazy making conversations with a narcissist, where they word salad, where they project, where they lie, where they deny, where they triangulate, where they blame shift, where they twist the story or completely fall silent on you, gaslight you in any way they can. So when you're just going to have a general conversation, you might not even be questioning them about something. They might just perceive it as you questioning them about something. When you go to have that conversation with them, they will do all they can to drive you crazy. So we get those emotions within us. We get that frustration, we get that anger, we get that annoyance and people only have limits. So they provoke and they bait people which is number eight, they will provoke and bait people to get that reaction from people so that they can then blame it all on the person. 
whatever the narcissist has done beforehand, they'll not recognise, they will pass the blame on to you for your reactions. The whole bait and switch. So they will bring you to that point where you react to them, then they will stand back looking all cool, calm and relaxed and, oh, I think you might need some help. Are you okay? Are you sure? I think you might be going a little bit crazy. And they just completely confused because you're left in that sense of confusion and your reality has been distorted. So you're left thinking, well, hang on a minute. No, this started with this and then this and it just leaves you feeling more and more frustrated. And the more you try and discuss it with them, the more they will bring you crashing down, the more you end up blaming yourself for their issues. And we all have issues. We have to be responsible for our own. We do not have to be responsible for other people's. A narcissist, however, will make you feel responsible for their issues. So you do all you can to help them, not realising you're losing yourself in the process. Changing plans on you, but often not telling you. So if you've arranged to do something and you're looking forward to it and then at the last minute they'll be, I told you last week we weren't doing that. And you're left thinking, well, I'm sure we were. Or if you planned on going on holiday somewhere and when it comes to booking it, they'll find a reason of not taking you. But they'll, they'll have that excuse within their mind that they will make you believe as to be quite reasonable. Not understanding that they most likely offered you that holiday in some sort of false apology to distract you from what was happening in that present moment to suck you back into their games and then once they had sucked you back in they've forgotten all about it they might even say i never said that so they'll always be changing the game on you you never know where you stand with a narcissist Nine, the smear campaign. And often they bait you into the smear campaign by making it in a way such that if you say or do anything to defend or protect your thoughts, your opinions, your behaviour, it plays into their hands. And whatever story they've told those around you, when you come saying your side of the story, it makes the narcissist more believable, which is rather unbelievable, but true. If you think back, if you dated a narcissist and the things they said about their ex, if their ex had come, or maybe one did, come to try and explain to you, you would not have believed the ex. You would have thought the ex was jealous or bitter or crazy or whatever lies the narcissist has fed you. And it's not until it happens to you that you think, ah, oh, the ex was right. The narcissist is a manipulative liar. Eleven that pressure, pressuring you into doing things that you wouldn't normally do. Saying things like, well, they're doing it, or my ex did it, your brother did it, your sister did it. Saying things like that, your friend, your other friend did it for them. They will, they will say something along those lines so that you question, well, if that person should do it, I shouldn't really have a problem with it. When if you've got a problem with it, you've got a problem with it. And no, that's your boundary. You do not do it. That's who you are as a person. If they don't respect you for who you are as a person, that is on them, not you. That is who you are. And they should respect you and love you for who you are as a person. But this is to get you to doubt yourself. And when it's things like my ex would have done it. You've got to stand back and think, they're an ex. They're an ex that did it and they are still an ex. You don't have to do something to keep someone. What you have to do is things that go with your beliefs, go with your boundaries, go with your go with your values because as soon as you start going against your values your beliefs and your boundaries is when you slowly lose who you are as a person the more you will start to question yourself as a person if people can't be with you based on your who you are as a person 
even if they don't agree with you, they shouldn't try to change you, just like we shouldn't try to change other people. We can all try to help other people, but those unwilling or unable to help themselves, we have to step away from the games, otherwise we are the ones that are going to end up hurting. 12 false compromise, as with most things narcissists do, they are playing a game over here while distracting you over here. So they'll be doing something, might get cut out on it, they'll, they'll offer you that false compromise that they let them think about it, which people can say, oh, just give me some time to think about it. So it sounds quite reasonable and we can take it on board as quite reasonable, but they're not. They're just distracting you from the fact that it's going to be a no, or they will offer you something. If they've done something that you've found out about, they will offer you something in the future so that you forgive them in the present. Yeah. That future never happens because it's false. 13 will fake that future with you to get their needs met in the present. And the same as that 15, I've lost count of numbers, um, the same as that false apology, the I'm sorry you, I'm sorry but, I'm sorry if. It's always done so that because a narcissist doesn't recognise their own behaviour or doesn't want to recognise their own behaviour or doesn't want you to recognise their own behaviour because they don't want to accept responsibility for their own behaviour, because they lack the empathy to be remorseful for their own behaviour, they don't feel a need to apologise unless it meets a need of their own. Therefore, if they have apologised to you and you forgive them, often their behaviour gets worse because they blame you for making them apologise to you. 16, I've lost count. <laughs> 16 is finances. So they will find a way to manipulate your finances, to drain you of your finances, to gain that financial control over you. 17, sleep deprivation. And there's, there's plenty of ways they cause sleep deprivation. It can be down to keeping you so busy that you don't get enough rest. It can be keeping you so stressed that you don't get enough rest. That even when you are sleeping, your mind is constantly doing overtime on the situations that happen when they've just fallen silent on you or fallen off the face of the planet and you, your worries sick. Things like that, they... Some can be extremely manipulative in telling you where you can sleep, but they can do it in a way of, if they're staying up at night to do something, they can guilt trip you into staying up with them and not going to bed and not getting enough sleep. They can wake you up in the middle of the night. They can make enough noise to wake you up in the morning. They can do things to cause that sleep deprivation, that insomnia within you, so you become drained and when you become drained your memory isn't as attuned as it should be therefore when they're gaslighting you and saying things did happen or didn't happen they did say or they didn't say because your memory isn't quite what it was because you're not getting the correct sleep you end up doubting and questioning yourself because you're not getting enough sleep your immune system can take a hit meaning you can end up with illness after illness which also drains your energy yet the narcissist will still expect you to serve them and walking on eggshells falling into their behavior trying to keep them happy is often what drains us as a person Fear. A narcissist will often get us into that state of fear, into that submission, conforming to them because we fear them, whether that's on a conscious level or a subconscious level. And once we are in that state of fear, we then go into the survival mode of fight, flight, freeze or fawn. If we fight back, that's then the reactive abuse where they blame us. If we freeze, it's never going to be good enough for a narcissist and they are going to put that pressure on you to do something. When we take flight, we have to overcome the trauma bond and 
we have to overcome the reality of what's happening to us. We have to overcome things like anxiety and depression. And when we fawn to their behaviour, we slowly lose who we are as a person, trying to please them as a person. A narcissist is a drain on our energy, our finances, our hopes, our dreams, our mental health, our physical health, our passions, our spirit, our joy. Please add in the comments anymore because they drain every aspect of our lives. Narcissists within the relationship and once out of the relationship can leave you with that trauma bond, they can leave you with stress, they can leave you with anxiety, they can leave you with depression, they can leave you with CPTSD, they can leave you living in fear and these are all things that we have to overcome as a person to move on within our lives. Which is why we need to grieve, we need to cry, we need to process the past to be able to leave it in the past with whatever method works for you as a person because when we carry the pain of the past with us in our present and carry it into our future it's only going to harm us in our future we have to learn to let things go if things don't serve us they are no longer for us and it's it's tough when those memories are there but there's plenty of different ways so it's just about finding the right support and the right help for who you are as an individual. There is no wrong way or right way to live your life. There is only your way. A few things you can try for yourself to retrain your brain is one, trying to get enough sleep, which can be difficult. But if you're waking up in the night, if it's, if it's coming to four or five o'clock in the morning try getting up try getting on with your routine trying to get on top of your day early in that morning to give you that boost that you're a little bit more organized that you're a little bit more ready and then start trying to go to sleep earlier and earlier just knocking five minutes trying to go to bed should i say just five minutes earlier each night to try and get some sort of sleep pattern that works for you. If you are someone that likes to go to bed late and likes to lay in and it works for you, then do it that way. Things like having 10 minute naps during the day, don't have them too late on because that will affect your nighttime sleep. Writing down the positives about your life before you go to bed, listening to something motivational before you go to bed, avoiding caffeine and things like this before you go to bed, trying to find the relaxing mood, putting some relaxing music on to help you fall asleep. The main thing is to try and think of things that you would like in your future or in on the bright side, finding the things to be grateful for, finding the things to be positive for so that you've got those happy thoughts within your mind as you drift off to sleep because the more you think about the stressful thoughts the more you think about the unhappy thoughts the less rest you're going to get and the less you're going to be able to manage to overcome those thoughts during the day two write down the things that you are good at narcissists are very good at pointing out our flaws so now you've got to sit there and consciously write out every single thing you are good at and focus on those things because everybody is good at something and everyone is usually good at more than just one something people are good at lots of different things so write down the things you are good at write down your skill set and even the things that you are not so good at you can work on those we can all improve it's about growth so working on how we can improve ourselves as a person we have to accept the things that we cannot change we have to work on the things that we can change and we have to remember the things that we don't need to change that we are good at that we just need to grow with and develop on three write down the things that you enjoy doing and start doing them four if by saying yes to someone else is saying no to yourself, start learning to say no to other people. 
five, think about something that you would like to achieve in your life. And if you're stuck on that, I can't think of something you didn't think you could achieve in your past and you have. So give yourself that evidence that you can. Six, take note of when you are saying to yourself, I can't, I'm not. Throw them out and start telling yourself, I can, I am. We have most often been programmed over a long period of time for our subconscious to talk to us in certain ways. Sometimes it can be our parents who weren't even narcissistic. It's just how they were raised. Sometimes it can be a narcissistic parent or a long-term relationship, friendship groups. When we've been trained to think in certain ways, we start to think that about ourselves and we have to shift those thoughts out to bring our own thoughts in. Seven, remind yourself that you are good enough. Eight, become addicted to something positive, something you enjoy. Nine, work on overcoming past traumas, work on overcoming CPTSD, anxiety, things like that. The more we bottle these things up, the more they're going to come and bite us in the future. We have to work on these things so that we can move on with our future. Ten, remember you are human. You are allowed emotions. You are allowed to grieve. You are allowed to cry. You are allowed to feel however a situation has made you feel. Work on recognising the emotion and recognising what that emotion is telling you. Do you need to change your perception? Do you need to change your approach? Do you need to change the way you are going about a situation? Recognise the emotion. The emotion work on the emotion. If you need to grieve, you need to grieve. If you need to laugh, you need to laugh. Find the things that work for you. 11, if it's all possible, no contact with a narcissist. If you can't go, no contact, limited contact, grey rock. 12, things that can help you, healthy eating, meditation, yoga, exercise, reading a good informative book, reading something funny, finding your sense of humour, whatever that sense of humour is to you. Lots of self-care. You've got to be at your best to be able to give your best. 13. Creating new routines, creating new dreams, starting new hobbies, bringing your passion back into your life. 14. When you are feeling low, again recognise that emotion, recognise why you're feeling low and then find the things that lift you back up, whether that is exercise, whether that is yoga, whether that's watching a funny movie, whether that's finding your sense of humour, whether that's turning on some positive music, whether that's turning on some banging tunes, whatever picks you up as a person, find that thing to bring you back out of that mood of feeling low. 15. If you are looking for therapy, find the right therapist for you. There is nothing wrong with asking for help. Plenty of people have lived through this. Plenty of people know exactly how you feel. So find the therapist that understands or the coach that understands. EMDR treatment is very good with a high success rate because that gets to the root cause of the issue that that helps overcome the actual trauma that you've been through. Because sometimes when we're treating the symptoms, we don't actually get rid of the issue. We have to get rid of the underlying issue that's causing us the pain, which is why you need to go no contact or limited contact with the narcissist. We have to get rid of the underlying issue that is causing us the pain so that we can find our happiness. I shall add the videos in the description on gaslighting, on the narcissist blame shifting projection, on overcoming fear and overcoming guilt and video on anxiety. There, I'm full for one-to-one -one coaching. There is a link in the description for better help where you will be matched with a licensed counsellor that will be able to help in this specific area. There is also some online courses in there because plenty of people do recover by listening to videos, reading material and finding their own path. It, it, it is about your own journey in life. It's about finding 
what works for you as an individual. You can and you will recover from this. I hope everyone has an amazing day. Bye.